So you've got a lot going on. I mean, you just released an album. You have um, a, a film coming out here in March. <laughs> Which is crazy. All about your life. Yes. Yes. And it's it's being produced by the Irwin Brothers. They they did I Can Only yeah. Imagine. So I know it's going to be amazing. And the cast is all-star. It's insane. Are Shania you? Twain's playing my mom. Yes. And then Gary Sinise, Lieutenant Dan's mm -hmm. playing my dad. And yeah. this kid, uh, he's in a TV show called Riverdale. Mm -hmm. He's KJ Appa. He's yeah. playing me. And then Britt Robertson, who has been in, you know, Tomorrowland and Dan in Real Life and For the People and all these different movies, mm -hmm. is playing Melissa. And so it's it's kind of crazy because once KJ and Gary um, signed up, it's like everybody wanted to be in the film. And I just felt like it was just God's favor. It was like, oh, we want to be in this, you know? And yes. like, something's, what's happening here? What is this? And I think also with the success of, I can only imagine, and the impact that it had, people want to be a part of something that has impact and has meaning, you know what I mean? And it actually touches lives. Because there's a lot of movies and good movies, but movies that actually will um, change a person's heart or mm -hmm. minister to someone is very rare, you know? But there's more of them coming out, which is amazing. So right, I'm excited. right, and we know it's going to be well done. I when I heard Gary Sinise was cast as your dad, I just, it just made me instantly wonder uh -huh. your dad's role throughout the process of that journey you yeah. were on, and it, we're we're so happy that you're open to yeah. sharing the journey. Uh, the book, I still believe yeah. that was a few years back, yeah. and uh, it, that's a book I actually picked up. One time you were passing through St. Louis, you had a concert at a radio station yeah. that I worked for back then. And I stepped out to the lobby and I was sitting next to my husband who at that time was on his yeah. own cancer journey. Yeah. And I picked up your book and just to, I mean, to know that you're not the only one who's yeah. walked through a similar journey, that is the, was the biggest help for me yeah. in that. So what are you most excited about, about this film Goodness. that's gonna portray that, you know, that, that love that and, hope and the loss mm -hmm. and the restoration and. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of, First of all, it's it was it was not easy. You know, I'm watching scenes, hospital scenes, yeah. and that to me was one of the hardest because you know the hospital brings back bad memories for me. And um, at one point, I literally was watching hospital scene and I I broke down. I, I left and I didn't actually come back because the next scene was was her um, flatlining and it was just one I didn't want to watch that over and over again. You know, because I yeah. do takes and takes over and over again. And but it was just amazing too because as i'm there and i'm watching this and I'm, it's hard to watch i all of a sudden i look over and i look at my kids and i look at my wife and i'm going wow lord you've been faithful yeah. you know and in the midst of watching that pain because i remember that pain because it, it triggered that in me mm -hmm. but i go but you didn't leave me you didn't forsake me you know and, and now you've been so faithful i have a beautiful family and now i'm sharing my story and and what you're talking about what are you excited about you know one of the things that god kind of gave me when I was thinking about this movie and what it's going to be is that pain is universal and everybody experiences it. It's worldwide. And I think for me, um, I want to share my story and share my pain and what I've been through, but share that there's hope and there's kind of two ways you can go and with your pain. You can either turn your back from the, to the Lord and say, forget you. Why did you do this? I want nothing to do with you, which there's no hope in that. You know what I mean? There's emptiness. And, and I had moments of like, feeling that way in moments of being angry and moments of saying, I can't do this and kind of going, I don't know, Lord. But then you get to the point where you're going, where else am I going to turn? Like he's my only source of hope. And so we all go through pain. It's universal, but it's what you do with it. And we want to hopefully display people, you run the Jesus because he's the only source of hope in life. And that's what this whole movie is about. That, mm -hmm. you know, when you trust in him, when you put your full faith in him, does it mean he's not going to be hard sometimes like I think a lot of times you say, you give your life to Jesus, then it's all good. It's like, no, it's not always all good. I mean, there's, it's, life is hard. There's difficult situations. Um, but he never said that, he, that you were not going to go through trials. He said, I'll be with you through the trials. Right. And I think that is the difference, is that he'll walk through us. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's a big part of this film. I think it's going to bring a lot of hope to people. Mm -hmm. That kind of faith that you're talking about, that was evident in Melissa from the moment you met her. Oh, my word. Yeah, I remember first time I met her, we uh, were at a Bible study, I remember, and doing worship. And I looked up at one point, and there she was just raising up her hands, just singing, like abandoned, 
you know, completely yeah. just no one else is around me. I don't care who's around me. It's me and Jesus right mm -hmm. now. And that's what kind of attracted me to her. Cause I'm like, Whoa, I mean, she has a relationship with Jesus and that kind of was the, the start of me going, okay, who is this girl? You know what I mean? And so we, we hung out for a while and of course had the ups and downs of relationship stuff. And there came a point where, you know, we kind of broke it off and I was devastated because I thought she was the one I remember telling her, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell her I love her. She's amazing. I thought it's been two weeks. It's perfect time. No big <laughs> deal. You know? And so I go up and I'm like, Melissa, you know, I don't tell you that I love you. And she's like, yeah, I can't tell you that right now. You know? So this kind of moment of like, oh, a little awkward, insecure moment. Yeah. Um, but I just kind of knew. So when we broke up, it was devastating. So I'm like, wait a second. I thought she was the one. And um, long story short, I got a phone call from a friend and they're like, hey, Melissa isn't, you know, in the hospital, she has cancer. And so I went down to visit her and I walked in and uh, she said, you know, Jeremy, I, I've been sitting here thinking, and if I die from this cancer, but if even one person gives her life to Jesus, then it's all worth it. And that really was one of those things that that I, I say a lot because it impacted me so much and it still does mm -hmm. that her life was so submitted to the Lord. She's like, I know where I'm going to go. Basically, I'm going to be with Jesus. So if my life can minister to somebody and touch somebody to the point where they come into Christ, it's all worth it. And, uh, so, you know, we ended up getting married and had an amazing, beautiful wedding. Like things were looking better. She went through chemo during our engagement yeah. and got back from the honeymoon and uh, went to the doctor because she was noticing some problems. And she, he said, hey, the cancer's returned and she has weeks to months to live. And coming from like this high of things are looking better, we're on our honeymoon, to right away saying she'll probably gonna, she's probably going to die in weeks or months is just, um, as a newlywed couple, you just can't believe all that you walked through and the highs and lows. And so um, four and a half months into our marriage, she, she went to be with the Lord. And this whole story is basically the, the movie is, is sharing how I left for college and how I met her, mm -hmm. um, how we fell in love. And it's fun. It's really sweet. And the actors did such an incredible job. Um, and then getting married, going through cancer, and then the angst of when she went to be with the Lord, um, what I went through. But it, it ends up with that hope with me. It ends up kind of not ending, but with me on stage singing, I still believe, mm -hmm. um, and sharing my story. Uh, and so it's a redemption story of no matter what the darkest time that may be in your life, uh, God will show himself faithful. And um, I hope that's displayed. And I'm excited to show the world because I, I think it's going to impact the world. It's an incredible movie. They did a great job. Yeah, I imagine that that song. So I still believe you wrote while she was sick. Yeah, actually, that was right two weeks after she went to be with Jesus. Okay. Yeah, so Walk by Faith I wrote while she was sick on her honeymoon. Okay. And then I still believe it was two weeks after. God was saying, pick your guitar up. And I'm like, no, like I don't want to pick my guitar. I'm like, I don't want to play music right now. And I sat there after arguing for a few times. Mm -hmm. And I picked the guitar up, started singing. And all I could say was, I still believe. I still believe. You had to tell yourself I that. did. I had yeah. to. Because it yeah. was like, the, the, the verses explain, like if you listen to the song, a lot of people who don't know my story and they listen to that song, they're like, what, what is that? Because it says, scattered words, empty thoughts seem to pour from my heart. Mm -hmm. I've never felt so torn before. Seems I don't know where to start. You know, and so it's this very honest, like I don't understand what's happening and I'm hurting, but, but I still believe, mm -hmm. you know, but it was a supernatural response because I feel like that, you know, it wasn't like, it's two weeks, I still believe. It was more... I'm going to have a hard time. This is crazy, but I still, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. Help me though. You know yes. what I mean? It's like the guy who wants to get healed. He's just like, you know, do you believe I can heal you? He's like, yeah, I believe it help my unbelief. Like, right. but I have unbelief too, you know? And I mm -hmm. think there was all that tied up in there and uh, it was a journey for mm -hmm. sure. And so it wasn't easy. A lot of grieving, a lot of anger, a lot of just um, confusion, uh, but God was there every single step. And I think that that is the beauty of his hand of faithfulness. Yeah. How did your community play into your healing? Oh, we talked goodness. earlier about the in the film, your dad, you know, Gary Sinise being cast as yeah. your dad and Shania Twain. Yeah. And I just have I just have this thought that there must be have been a huge impact yeah. from your family, maybe your faith community. Big time. Friends and family, you know, in mm -hmm. Indiana. Um, there's a part in the movie that displays really and, and sums up what my dad did and how he spoke to me um, after it all happened. And it's this beautiful scene, a father and son scene. 
that he just encourages me. And uh, it's, it's, it's a tearjerker because <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, you know, and, and it was almost like all the things that my dad did and said, and it was all summed up in that moment because I had to put it in a moment right. and uh, it was beautiful. And, um, you know, I think that for me, it's the same thing where you can either choose to run away from your community and be like, I want to be alone, leave me alone or embrace and let, let them just speak in love on you. And, mm-hmm. and they don't have to even say anything. I tell people all the time, if someone's grieving, sometimes don't say anything, actually. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. love on the person, as you know. You want someone just to put their hand on your shoulder, someone just to cry with you, someone yeah. just to sit with you. You know what I mean? You don't always need words. If God gives you words, mm-hmm. great, but make sure they're from him. Because right. I had a lot of people say a lot of things that I was like, that probably wasn't from the Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so please yes. be quiet. I mean, honestly. And uh, so just just be there for somebody and love on them. You I've know? experienced what you, what you just said, of course, I think, because yeah. you know, people always want to say something. Yeah. And um, I think that's why I saw you, I purchased your book yeah. back when you came through St. Louis. And then a few years later, I saw you just weeks after my husband passed away. Yeah. And you were in St. Louis for a, a, an interview that I didn't do, but you were at the radio station. So I stopped, said hello. I think I may have said, hey, I read your book and it really helped me. And that was about it because of oh my that goodness. whole idea about not knowing where a person might be in that moment. And not knowing, you know, it's so incredibly sensitive. Of course, I was three weeks out from losing Dan, too. Gosh. But as I looked back at the dates, the very next day would have been the anniversary of your losing your uh, your losing Melissa. Oh, so my word. So I was really glad I didn't say anything. But yeah, we, we do hear a lot of things. I think the most important thing that I ever felt was just the presence of my friends. Yeah. Just but, simply being present. Amen. Yeah. I have a girlfriend who would crawl into bed with me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so that may sound weird to a lot no, of people. No, no. But at, at that moment, in that moment of grief, I yeah. mean, you just need people right there next to 100%. you. hundred percent. So, yeah. That's yeah. not weird at all, because that's exactly what you need sometimes, <laughs> just to have that, that right. presence of somebody by you. So right. That somebody you're like, you yeah. care. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank and you. somebody to tell you to eat and yeah. to get up and walk outside oh. and get some exercise and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so glad we got to have this conversation. I am sure that <laughs> all of that, now you fast forward, yeah. and you've been through some restoration. God has healed your life immensely, and I, I cannot wait to see that in the movie, how that all plays out. Um, then you meet Adrian. Yeah. Right? And Which so- she's in the film. She is in the yeah, film. Not That's, her, but like meeting her is in the right. film. It's, okay. it's kind of a side story that kind of follows at the mm-hmm. very end. And then we meet at the very end and she shares how, because she legitimately came to me one time because she was watching me play and said, you know, when Melissa said, if one person is is touched, then it's been all worth it. She was, I was one of those people. Wow. And because uh, she was having a struggling, not having, doing, doing well and just really having a hard time. And God used her story uh, to minister to her. And so that's mm-hmm. how we, in the film, it kind of like we meet. And then at the end, you'll see they've been married now for, you know, 16 years. And yeah, so it's really beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah. I had no idea that part of the story. Oh, yeah. So I imagine you have brought forward so much from that experience at such a young age. Yeah. I mean, there's no way you can walk through that kind of loss and not gain wisdom right. that you would have not otherwise found. 100%. <laughs> how does that impact your your current marriage, how does it impact how you are as a husband and a dad? Well, Three you, beautiful children, by yeah, the way. Yeah, which is yes. crazy. My daughter's almost 15, my oldest Whoa. daughter. I'm like, why? Call me if you need some advice. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> exactly. So we're learning a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is you really learn to, well, you try to learn to enjoy the moments more. Yes. Um, and we've really talked about that. I actually wrote a song about it for this record because I was like, I- I'm in that place again, being reminded of my story, not reminded, but you know what I mean. Well, yeah. Having to relive it again. That's hard. Um, and knowing that my daughter could be out of the house in three years. And you're going, okay, this is going by really fast. And, mm-hmm. you know, the song was just, uh, came out called Keep Me in the Moment. And uh, was just going, I want to stay in that. I think a lot of what I've learned is you stay in the moment. And petty things that used to bother or that you just, you deal with. You mm-hmm. don't let it go. You don't try not to let the sun go down your anger. All those kind of things that you just go, okay, it's, I want to enjoy, you know, these things are pointless, you know, the little fights and little things. Not that you don't, not that we don't have arguments and don't have right. issues. We do. Um, it's in our book. Trust me. <laughs> you know, we, we share very honestly about our marriage and the struggles and the, the fights sure. and different things. Um, but how God was the one that pulled us out and how we had to learn all these different lessons. And so um, 
yeah, there's a lot you learn. You mature mm-hmm. a lot quicker. You you find yourself, as you know, you feel like you're close to the Lord, and when that happens, you find yourself at His feet. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I thought I knew the Lord, but now I really you understand His His mercy and peace and His grace like never before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how do you? This is, and you know, well, let me ask you this before I ask you that question about your marriage. <laughs> Does, do you feel that the grief ever completely ends? That you're ever completely healed from that? Let me explain this. Cause, cause it's, I get this question sometimes. Um, and it's a hard one because, um, people in my situation will be like, well, but you moved on, you got married and you have kids now and it's a mm-hmm. whole new thing. And yes, but I'll explain when, when you have a, a wound, and then you hurt yourself and it's this festering open wound it's it's hurts it's you touch it you look at it and it's like oh and it's just this really raw you know emotion raw feeling um that'll heal Mm -hmm. that that open wound's gonna heal you know but you still have a scar there and a lot of times when you see the scar you could be reminded of the pain and i'll watch things sometimes i'll watch a movie or whatever that not even thinking about it and there's a scene all of a sudden where, you know, this guy, his wife ends up dying. Up, up I, on the cartoon, like was like, you know, his wife of the old age, you know, sure. cartoon and she dies and you're like, oh, the emotion, yeah. it gets brought up again. Right. Um, because you remember that feeling of loss mm-hmm. and hurt and pain um, that doesn't go away, but it's a new normal. I call it the new normal. You don't, I don't sit there. It's not an open festering wound. I don't sit there and think about it all the time. Mm-mm but things will trigger it. And this movie has definitely triggered some emotions big time. Um, but I don't go to a, a place where it's like complete devastation. It's just more like, yeah, that hurts, you mm-hmm. know? And so that hopefully should be an encouragement because it's not like you, you can know that you're, you're not gonna just get over it one day and don't let somebody say, you'll get over it, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but it's not gonna be this overwhelming sense of of despair Mm -hmm. um that hope is there that god gives you um but you'll still have moments and it's okay yeah it's okay yeah your new normal i think is from a place of strength and i imagine that adrian is a really special woman to to live this out with you yeah and to relive it again yes because now it's going to be in front yes. of millions of people more and more, yeah. you know, that people are going to see our story and they're going to ask mm-hmm. questions again. And they're going to, you know, and honestly, they're going to see, oh, so Adrian, you're the, they're going to fall in love with Melissa and me in the story. And then Adrian's like, oh yeah, you're the second wife that came in at the end. Like that's, that's being very honest. You know what I mean? That we've yeah. honest conversations of like, oh yeah, it's going to be that as much as people won't think that like, we're not dumb. Like, you know what I mean? It's how, it's how things work. And so mm-hmm. it's, her having to go, okay, I got to prepare myself for that and for those questions and for like people to fall in love with Melissa, which is awesome and you want them to, but like, but to be like, hey, like we've been married for years now and have kids and, right, you know, um, and it's just reality of it. Mm-hmm. But we understand that God's going to use this and we're ready for it. Mm-hmm. Like bring it on. And know? in all those years, you already have found ways to still honor Melissa. A hundred percent. And 100%. she has too, I'm sure. Yeah. So you guys are working. Massively. Yeah. Yes. So one thing about my wife's been awesome is she has honored Melissa like crazy. Mm-hmm. She's been the one, probably one of the most champions for my story. I mean, yeah. she, I went through a season of not sharing at all because I was like, okay, not that I moved on, but it's like, you don't want that to be, oh, he's the guy that lost his wife. It's like, that's right. sometimes what it is. And mm-hmm. it's like, and now he's happy and never goes through anything. And, you know, he's just got this great career and I go through struggles still. I go through hardships and pain and, and things get brought up and there's still all that. But she's, she was telling me many times, why did you stop sharing your story? <laughs> you know, share it. It's, yeah. it's a part of your life. You know, it's, it's not your whole life. You don't have to just share that. But you can share like when inspiration comes up or if you're talking to somebody that needs to hear that, God might give you an opportunity on the radio or on at a show where you need to share it because someone needs to hear it. Yes. Don't shut it down just because you don't want to share about it. Let the Lord lead you. Yeah, I I really appreciate that you yeah. were open to share your story. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, for me, where I was when I picked up your book, it's what told me I, I wasn't alone. Yeah, totally. and that I, I, that was huge. Yeah, that was so huge. Um, as you and Adrian relive some of this, you yeah. know, and she's brought back into it. That's a chapter, and then that is a hard and yeah. beautiful chapter of your life. 
But then, like you said, we have this marriage book coming out. So there's your next chapter, and that's going to be a beautiful one, too. It's exactly what it is. I think as we were doing this movie and realizing that people are going to kind of want to know, okay, so now he's remarried. What's the next chapter? And it's not like our story. We don't just share like a story. It's It's like a marriage book, but we do share our story. We share how we met and all that. But it goes into, all right, first year in marriage, like, this is a challenges. Here's some of the things that we've learned. Mm-hmm. Here's how to deal with the fact that she's a strong personality. And and so what does it mean to have a, a strong wife, you know, and, yeah. and how that works together? Mm-hmm. Here's what it means to, uh, to walk in transparency and have communication. And so it's really just going, this is what we've learned over mm-hmm. 16 years of marriage, you know, and we're still learning. Uh, we are a work in progress for sure. But we want to share what we've learned, and, yeah. and we feel it's funny. We were like, "Why are we writing a marriage book?" We feel disqualified, like we don't not disqualified, but we don't feel qualified uh, to write a marriage book. But we have learned a lot. Mm-hmm. We've been married for a while. We have kids, and yeah, um, we've we've been through ups and downs, and we just shared how God got us through it and what yeah. we've learned. Yeah, you've been through all the struggles of marriage, oh, marriage, yeah. and you're married. Oh still, yeah, which is qualifies you. Totally, right yeah, totally <laughs> true. Which is crazy, and yes. I think that's for us. We feel like that this new generation uh, needs, I'm not a younger voice, you know, mm-hmm. I'm getting older now, but but a younger voice of writing their experience as a young couple, but that's been married for a, a while enough and has three kids, daughters 15 and 13 yeah. and eight and my son. And I think it's a good, uh, good time for that. And I feel like that. God wanted us to write this book, and I feel like he gave us the wisdom, and it's really exciting, Yeah, really exciting. Well, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for the movie. I still believe to see it all played out on screen. It's going to be beautiful. It's crazy. I can't believe it. 